Hello and what is going on today guys, Tomcat here and today we're going to be talking about drifting in Need for Speed Payback and how to maximize your scoring potential and some of the tricks that we can use to maximize that scoring potential and we're using the event down by the river as an example of a lot of the techniques we're going to use here. We're also going to be talking about live tuning a bit because live tuning is definitely important to what we're doing here but the main thing is how we're handling the car and one of the biggest things that I find that people don't necessarily don't necessarily use is people don't take advantages of these straightaways right if you have a car that's set up properly you can transition back and forth and back and forth and back and forth along these straightaways to maximize your drift score and not lose your combo now of course the game tells you to use your NOS to retain your uh, to retain your multiplier which you can do but if you want to keep that score building constantly you can swing the car back Back and forth with a gentle tap of the brakes each time and if you practice that enough what you'll find is that you will get into a rhythm with these back and forth and back and forth and back and forth transitions and of course it doesn't always work it doesn't it's not a hundred and ten percent you know guaranteed to work constantly it's something that's gonna take practice um, and it's gonna require you to practice it a few times but that is one of the things that is going to help you maximize your scores a lot. Another thing is your car. This car is making around about the neighborhood of 800 horsepower. And the main things that I usually try to focus on with a drift car in, in Need for Speed Payback, at least, is I like it to have a lot of power. And I also like it to be um, fairly pointy and fairly... I don't want to say twitchy because twitchy is the wrong word. This car is, it's weird. It's twitchy when you want it to be, but it's also very smooth when you need it to be. So that's why I really, really, really like the Camaro in terms of, especially a car that's fairly, fairly accessible to people that are maybe, you know, halfway-ish through the game. But this is where we get into the live tuning a little bit and you guys will be able to see the setup I'm working with, which my drift angle isn't all the way up. It's close, but not all the way. Weight balance I didn't mess with all too much, um, I kind of moved it around just for the sake of showing that, my, and my handbrake strength is up one tick from center, but nothing crazy, and this exact setup is the same setup that allowed me to put in a uh, an over 1 million point score on this event, which I'm sure there's people out there that have scored more than that, but I, I felt that that was a good enough score to go ahead and relay some of that information to you guys, so you guys can see... Uh, some of the tricks that, that that are going on here and the thing is if you can if you can like hit ballpark of about a hundred thousand points before the bridge you know that if you maintain it you're gonna have a solid run so it, that's one of the you want to get you want to get some some reference points as to where you are on the course because that will start to really build your your knowledge of like okay if I score this much by this point then if I keep doing generally about the same that I normally do, then I'll have this much by the end. And if I can hit this by a certain point, I'll have this much by the end. So you want to give yourself some reference points. And once you give yourself some reference points, then you'll be able to hone in on the areas that you need to work on or you'll be able to figure out areas where you may be losing out on some scoring potential. And for a lot of people, that's going to be the straightaways. And really getting into a rhythm, transitioning the car back and forth is going to really help take care of a lot of the areas where you may be having issues maintaining your scoring combo. Now, another thing that I really wanted to talk about, considering the fact that this video is all about maximizing your scoring potential, you can use the dirt, you know, it's like, yes, it might not look the prettiest, but if you're really just wanting to maximize and maximize and maximize that scoring potential, you can go into the dirt and you can carry that score and you can carry that drift. And you can also, what you can use the dirt for is you can use the dirt to make the track bigger. Now, what I mean by that is the, the more room that you have to slide the car around, the longer the route that you take, the more potential you have to score higher, which frankly is exactly what we're looking for. We're looking to maximize the usable space so that we can squeeze as much, as many points out of the event as possible. And what do you need for that? Space. You need all the space you can get. And the key to that, like I said, is to use or if you want to use the dirt you can now i'm sure that you could put in a higher score by staying on the pavement if you did it exactly perfectly but again you can use the dirt to 
maximize that scoring uh, potential. I know I keep saying scoring potential, but um, you know, to get to get more points, bro. That's the whole objective here to get more points, boy. But Again, another thing is practicing with the car, right? A lot of people don't put in the time to practice with the car, and they'll run it once or twice, and they'll go, oh, this car sucks, and it might not actually be the car. Now, in some cases, it may be the car. In some cases, the car might the car might suck. But in other cases, like, give the car, like, if you feel like there's more more performance to be had or more potential to be had out of the car, give it a fair shake. Give it a few runs. Like, really, really work with it and get, you know, get yourself worked up to the car and really practice with it. I mean, this Camaro, there's been a bit of an evolution with it. And uh, it started out as a stock one, just with a, dr like, stock one in a drift type, obviously. And we just started to build it up and build it up and build it up from there. And like I said before, it's right around 800 horsepower. And we've got a few other things done to it in terms of in terms of speed cards and stuff like that. You know, ev everything to get it up to the necessary... Um, necessary level but it doesn't have you know like maxed out nitrous or anything like that like it's no crazy bonkers insane machine but i think the thing that you really want to look at with with this is the fact that a lot of it comes down like a lot of it may come down to the car yes but the other major part of it comes down to practice like and i find that this event really 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 works because it's got the speed it's got the sweepers it's got the tight stuff it's got one corner one corner where you'll use the handbrake and i'll call it out for you guys on the way back down but it's got one corner where you'll use the handbrake and you if you i mean you don't necessarily have to use it but it can save your combo and your score if you do use it so with that being said Making a run down the hill, um, you want to kind of get the tail out a little bit beforehand and then transition back in. It's all about starting the combo because the earlier you start your combo, the earlier you start building your multiplier. And in the beginning, you may be, a, you may be like, oh, that's only an extra 800 points or whatever. But that 800 points will contribute to the multiplier, which will in turn mean an extra couple thousand or maybe 10,000 or extra 15,000 points later down the track. So it's all, it all kind of builds into this multiplier that if you focus on that multiplier and you focus on getting it built up as early as humanly possible, I mean, we're already over like 350,000 points. So with being this early on, we're not even a quarter through the through the run yet, and we're already over 400,000 points. So keep in mind, multiplier is key, and that's why these transitions back and forth and back and forth are really good because they help keep the car in, uh, they help keep the multiplier building, sorry. They help keep the multiplier building rather than just maintaining it. And I really don't use nitrous that much. This is the handbrake corner, by the way, um, just because it hooks a little bit tighter than a lot of the other corners. But we did something like, like, it, it was over 700,000 points in this first combo, and I didn't want to bank it, but the game kind of made me bank it. Um, I, well, it didn't make me bank it, it just banked it because I lost the, I lost the drift. But regardless, this definitely, it definitely helps, it definitely works, and I think if you want to really get your drift scores um, a little bit higher than, I would say, average, then uh, then definitely, you know, definitely practice this stuff and play around with the live tuning. If you want to, you know, use the setup that I used, feel free to do that. And if you enjoyed this video and this quick tutorial, don't forget to leave me a like. Tell me in the comments down below what you guys thought of it. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time. Talk to you guys later.